Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop. If you've been considering building a Moxon vise, but perhaps you have yet to decide on which hardware kit to use, I'm going to do a comparison between the Wood River and the Bench Crafted. If you're interested, stay with me. I'll share my results. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. What brought on this topic was we were planning to actually do a video on making a Moxon vise, and uh, a proper one. One of the big advantages of that is that you can elevate your work. So for a lot of folks, you want to have your bench relatively low for planing, but when it comes to sawing dovetails, it's nice to have it elevated a little bit so you're not having to bend over so much. So in deciding that we were going to do this, we had to find a hardware kit to use. So all it consists of really is two threaded rods, some nuts and washers, and some form of a hand wheel. Now, I think this is a really good idea, but as I said, we had to determine which of these kits currently available we're going to use. So that's the reason behind this. Now let's take it apart and have a closer look. Now I want to start with a little bit of a disclaimer. And I'll be uh, honest, this I've never built a Moxon vise. I've always preferred the traditional Scandinavian style vise, but I appreciate how this can fit better for some people in certain applications. Being unfamiliar with it, I asked Luther. And he recommended the bench crafted. He said this is the Tesla of Mox and Vice hardware. But I was hired back in 2008 to help wood, uh, Woodcraft develop their hand plane line, the, ben, the Wood River. And I've been impressed with them. I actually sell them. I think they're great value. Knowing that they also made a Mox and Vice kit, I thought, well, let's give that one a try as well. So that's why we chose to compare these two. And now we'll get into the nitty gritty, talk price, have a look at the parts as they came right out of the box, and I'll give you my opinion. Okay. Let's start with the Woodcraft first. So the wheels, the cast iron wheels are five inches in diameter. Uh, you've got one inch of thread contact. It's finished on the outside. The threaded rods are eight by three quarter and it's a, reg a relatively coarse Acme thread. The nuts that they provide don't look like anything different than what you would find at a hardware store. And the washers, same thing, nothing special about the washers. Now we actually went in and did a modified Mox and Vice, and we, because they provide this flat spot, we went in and drilled and tapped that and added a handle to it. And when we show you the one we did, I'm gonna suggest that this was a really good idea. Price on this, 110 uh, US dollars, and these are made in China. Now the bench crafted. And since I just said that, these are made in the US, and the price on this is 183 US. If you look at the uh, hand wheel, now these come rough, meaning that's how it came out of the cast. There's been no polishing done on it. I do believe there's an option, but that's not what I have in front of me. You have full two inches of contact with the thread. And if you look at these, it's a much cleaner thread and a much finer thread than the uh, Woodcraft. I don't know if that makes a difference to you or not. Um, the nuts, it looks like they've been made specifically for this. They've got a flat side that's actually designed to fit up against something, but you've got a lot more contact with the uh, nut than you do, uh, the bolt, pardon me, than you do on the Wood River. These are actually not washers, but these are spacers or uh, more of a bushing, I guess. So up that would go, you have your jaw, then you'd have this, and then you'd have the wheel running on that. Now, these guys also give you a... Uh, piece of material for a liner on the face of your jaw. And that's actually a good idea because not only will it protect your work, but it'll actually improve the grip. However, having said that, um, these provide enough grip that when you put them in place, I don't think that you're ever going to move it. And you can always go and get something like this, but it's nice of them to actually include it. And I mentioned that this is $183. All right, so with that information, I'm going to show you the one that we did, the modified one we did, and I'm just going to run through how it works. Actually quite impressed with it, and I think you may be as well. So here they are in action. This is actually an idea of Jason Langle, and uh, asked him if he mind if we did a video. So we'll leave a link below. Great, great way 
to give yourself advice when you don't have a proper bench attached to the end of your table saw. But I decided to put one on one end and one on the other and then try them out. This is maple and your capacity here I think is 30, the capacity here is 30 inches. So we'll do this one first. You spin that, that's what you get. This one, spin that. Yeah, it's probably not quite as smooth, but not a huge difference. And you would open it up, drop your board down in there, and then snug it up. And I don't see much of a difference in terms of, you're not gonna get much of a difference because they're the same diameter, but that holds that firmly and there's no way that thing's gonna budge on you. So absolutely fantastic for holding your work vibration free. As far as closing it, this one's heavy and it probably tightens up a little more because of the amount of weight when that's spinning, but you know, you decide. I do want to show you one addition we made that I think is a really good idea if you decide to go with something like this. So if you decide to build Moxon Vice, I'm going to share a few ideas with you. This was David Barron's idea, was to add two springs on here. So what we did is we just bored the holes big enough on the back side so that they would catch the spring and also they would capture that nut. So these will go on. And you want those holes to be just big enough so that this can move sideways without jamming. Put your washers on the outside. And this is, if you're going to go with the Wood River one, adding this knob makes a huge difference. And the reason is if you're going to use the springs. Now, first of all, I'll sell you on the reason for the springs. So when it comes to opening this up to put your board in, rather than having to sit there and unwind these and then pull the board back, the springs bring it back for you. And that's a really nice feature. It just makes it so much easier. However, having to move this, because it's not going to spin on its own with the spring in there, having that little handle on there really makes this extremely convenient. So you can kind of see where I'm leaning. In fact, we were so impressed with this, we're actually going to start selling them. We're going to sell them with the handle, with the spring. And I think it, uh, for the price, I think it's great value. And I really like this idea in this application, if you don't have a bench or making a portable one that can sit on top of your bench to elevate things, particularly if you're cutting a lot of dovetails and you don't want to spend your afternoon leaning over a short bench. Anyway, hope this helps. If you enjoy my method of work, and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the plane and chisel icon below, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our in-person and online workshops.